CRVS stock. This is Corvus Pharmaceuticals. So I'm just going to pop through the news release and then we'll take a look at the charts. Uh, this is, a, a, you know, a stock that might get hypey soon. And so they're just moving into phase one trials now. And they have a treatment that activates B cells, which stimulates your immune system uh, in response to coronavirus. And this is a company that does a lot of cancer trials. And so they're looking at this type of treatment that they've been researching for cancer, uh, you know, uh, to see how effective it is in treating the coronavirus symptoms. So Burlingame, California, I have friends there. I used to live in San Francisco. And so that they had, they had five people. Uh, the first cohort was five patients. And now they're moving into phase one and they're going to move to 30 patients. And so this is a ag agonistic <laughs> immunostimulatory. So this is a treatment that helps your immune system just have a, an elevated response. And it's called CPI 006. And so this, uh, both in the test tube and in live patients, has helped the immune cells have an adaptive response. Uh, both B cells and the lymphocytes and it's uh, IgM and IgG antibodies. So it helps with production of antibodies and memory cells uh, to pathogens such as COVID-19. And this is not, it's not like a vaccine or something like that, but this helps with recovery time and you know long-term immunity uh, with your body's natural response. So this is an interesting treatment that's coming out. It's a little bit different to a lot of the other things that we've been looking at. So cancer, 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 cancer. So this is what they've been developing is cancer treatments. And now they're seeing if it's effective helping with COVID. Yeah. So B cell activating, you know, antibodies. And so this is super different from something like an mRNA type of vaccine where they have the exact, you know, RNA encoding for the type of antibodies that you want to produce to fight COVID or something like that. Like this is just activating a natural response and it, it could have a super wide range of and diseases that it could be helpful with um, because it's not, it's not like telling your body how to respond. It's just activating a, a bigger response. All right, so here's the stock chart, CRVS. This is Corvus Pharmaceuticals. And I'll put this on the COVID playlist if you want to go check out some other stocks to check out for this. And so this is the first real news blast from this company related to, you know, coronavirus. And so we don't have any kind of a trend line to trade off. This is daily candles. This is a long-term look. But they've been in a general bearish pattern, just kind of a slight bearish pattern for the last few years. Let's get in on what's going on right now and check it out. Okay, so... So they've got a huge blast from the, whatever, 2 to $3 range up to 7 So this is a, a big shot. And you can see the general momentum here has been down. So as a general reaction to kind of news blasts like this, I usually try to find, uh, so yeah, about 60-something, 70% of the time. These news blasts, they'll kind of peak and they'll kind of settle back out. Usually in the same day, they'll come down and kind of settle out in an area here above where it took off from. So not investment advice, but, you know, somewhere in this kind of area, maybe as like a landing target for today. Uh, but this stock does not have any kind of building support or anything like that leading into this. Like this is the first big blast for their company, you know, regarding the coronavirus. And so we don't have any kind of we don't have any kind of bubble or speculative trend line or anything to work with here. And we have lower, lower lows, lower lows coming into here. So this one is uh this one is much trickier than a, a bunch of the other stocks that sort of built up to where it, the news blast happened. Because in those cases you can expect it to kind of land higher. But in this case, this is just a long bear trend. Um, 
Yeah, I can't I can't put really a, a target above where it is now just because it's been trending down for so long. We don't have any kind of support to work with here. So, well, yeah, this is definitely reversing now. Um, hmm. So I would expect this stock to continue reversing out. And I think it probably will land above where it took off. I mean, somewhere in this area right now, but there's not really a lot of support to hold it there. I I just want to see, I want to see more, I want to see more trading activity on this to see if we can build some kind of trend line to work with uh, before, before throwing this in the hype list. Like this one, this one doesn't have hype yet. So that's just kind of the trading outlook on this. Um, it's just a new company to keep an eye on with a coronavirus treatment that it's a cancer company that does immune system kind of stimulation that may be useful. But yeah, but as far as like a, you know, kind of speculative Corona day trading thing, there's very little to work with here. We don't have, we don't really have support. We don't have any kind of a, a trend line to work with and we're already getting we're already getting a parabolic reversal like before market open here. So yeah, I, I don't know. This is just a, just take a look and see if this one forms some kind of pattern that's useful for trading. Uh, but as far as an, a really early entry point into a stock that might be, that might be interesting, like the trading volume is going nuts. So this stock probably will remain interesting for the next year or so. And if it does reverse back down uh, anywhere in the area where it was previously, it probably will be. It'll probably land higher. And this could be a this could be a really early entry point into a stock that could. Yeah, if it comes back down into here, probably just today or tomorrow, that could be an interesting lottery ticket on a potential trend line that you know could trend through. A couple phases of development on this thing, and you know, if you look at if you look at stocks like mRNA or something like that, that have had ten news blasts already, and they've already had a ton of hype. Like that's a really late time to kind of get into a speculative lottery ticket kind of play. And this one is this one's early. It's early and it's low. You know, it's well. Not that that's necessarily a good thing because it's been in a bear market since the beginning, but I mean, this just here is historical lows for this stock. And maybe, maybe this is a recent kind of trend up, but well, where's Feb? Feb something 20. Okay. So this is, this chart is largely just ignoring the whole, the whole, the whole crash and the whole bounce, like, I guess it did kind of crash with the crash and didn't really bounce that well. It's been trending down. Mm. Yeah, this one, this one doesn't have doesn't have a whole lot of correlation with the the whole market and doesn't have a lot of trends to work with as far as day trading. But it is a it is at a super low historical price, and as far as kind of a, a hypey kind of lottery ticket looking thing uh, this could be interesting so i guess just falling into day trading there's two patterns that i've been seeing on these kind of speculative coronavirus stocks as you come into the day trading most of the time it just does a parabolic reversal down like the same day a little bit above where it started and the other pattern that happens a little bit less frequently is you get you get it like a, a flag out on the first day and usually that'll pop up and then and then that second pop up will reverse down to a little bit of a higher bottom uh, over like a week or something over a few days and so that's kind of a thing to watch i guess today um as far as kind of just playing with this thing on a speculative level is if this thing does flag out today um the likelihood of it popping again is higher, much higher. Uh, but if it just kind of reverses down, that's a spot. That's a spot that's been holding for most of these stocks. And it usually will pick up a little bit of a trend line after that. 
And then who knows? I mean, they're just going to phase one trials now. They're probably not going to be much news for a month or two. So, I mean, this could be this could be a spot to just hold this thing until the next the next news blast goes. I mean, it's cheap, you know, to play around with or something like that. So let's jump over to S&P. This is still uh, pre-market, I think. Yeah, so yesterday we had super, super tight trading. Like it, it popped up pre-market and just traded in a really, really tight zone. And now it's just wobbling a little bit. But it looks like we're getting, it looks like we're getting support on top of this zone that we've been trading in for a while. And so yeah, I was taking a look at the double island top kind of scenario in an earlier video, but it's it's really strange for, <clears throat> in the bearish case for like a double top here, as far as the islands go. We didn't get, we didn't get an increase in volume into this, into this reversal, I mean, usually the volume, when you do an island top reversal, especially like a double island top, um, the volume usually builds up all the way up through the reverse, and you kind of get max volume on the reverse down. But that's not at all what happened here. This is a really weird volume pattern where the volume just like decreased all the way into this reversal, and then crazy stuff and then after it got over here then you got a huge volume this is really strange really strange volume pattern and i guess just in the in the general technical area here we're still below resistance here and it looks like we're finding a little support here and so this is this is a really tricky spot to try to go to go long because I mean it's support kind of in this zone and then you have the long term trend line here. And so it's just a bunch of it's a bunch of stuff. You're right at you're right at resistance here. I mean after you break out of this area and kind of turn up for the bulls, if you get out here, like then there's very little resistance. Then you're then you're looking at long term kind of top over here but right now right now we're kind of at a top area and we've broken out of the top so this does look like a bullish kind of breakout technical setup um, but it's not like clear space above like we're right at resistance right here in between so so this is this is kind of a tricky setup but this does look way more bullish I was looking at this, I mean, this, all this stuff here happened off market over the weekend. So it looked like it was gonna reject and stay in this zone. Um, and then it just gapped up to open on Monday, which is really interesting. It's really interesting. And for me, that puts the bullish target for me like up here along this trend line. And that's not necessarily even a bullish target. Like this is a bearish reversal spot. Uh, on my model, and this is a two-year support trend line. And so, so yeah, I mean, kind of like already gap filled this this area here, mm, but I I'm much more into the long-term support trend lines than these kind of horizontal zones. And I don't the horizontal zones haven't really been holding up much in and the last few months, like the things that have been making the most sense are the the long term support lines on this model, like the bubble model and the liquidity outlook has been uh, has been mapping pretty well to the stock market. Looking at like the Fed balance sheet, are they adding liquidity? The Treasury general account, are they taking liquidity out of the market? And then the foreign. Um, you know, like the foreign treasury trading to see if foreign markets are going to dollars or investing. And so right now, I just saw like the Fed is buying a little bit more mortgage-backed securities right now. Um, they The Fed completely stalled out for the last three weeks or so on 
pumping money into the market. And they've actually been taking money out of the repo market. The Treasury General account is still going up. They're taking money out. And uh, foreign, so foreign entities now have started selling a, a little bit more treasuries. Uh, so that's one thing that could add a little bit of liquidity. And the, yeah, the Treasury account is still is still holding up. So we won't get we won't get more uh, balance sheet information until like Thursday after market. Um, but the mortgage-backed securities aren't a huge like flow into these markets, and so it's pretty it's pretty still. Like we had huge liquidity over this whole run up, and now we've had pretty still liquidity, and it's just kind of chopping sideways. It's not falling. So yeah, so I think pro probably right now this is a really difficult time to trade, where we can't really see a trend in the liquidity. And we're just kind of between a bunch of support and resistance zones where it's just kind of chopping around. Um, and it's not clear whether it's a bull market or bear market trend. Like we're above the long-term moving averages, kind of in a bullish spot. You know, we're above the 12-year trend line, which is a bullish spot. Um, but we've rejected really hard off this two-year trend line. So that's a big bearish reversal. We're, we're just, and we have, we still have high VIX volatility. So kind of the liquidity and the technicals and things like that, it's a mixed bag of, of signals, whether this is bullish or bearish, like long-term kind of market conditions. Um, and just it's just kind of chopping around and kind of going crazy. So I want to see I want to see a little bit more action, I think, until I until I try to figure out what is going on here. Um, but this is definitely more bullish now, looking like it's looking like it's uh, staying up here, and uh, that's the bullish and the bearish target really um, for a move up. Like that's a huge bearish reversal spot, and that's a huge bullish spot to break here. So that's kind of that's kind of the spot where I'm looking for a move up is wherever this is three two seven six, and. I think if it wants to break down, it needs to do it. It needed to do it yesterday. Like it's getting late to kind of break down into the zone now. It's gotten up a little bit high. Yeah. So yeah, if this thing wants to break down now and reverse out of this area, it needs to do it quick. The more, the more this flags out or anything, the more it does anything but break down right now, the more bullish it gets. Um, in the short term, uh, you know, aiming at these couple of targets, kind of a, an area of several resistance zones through this island top area, and then the actual target here on the back side of this two year support line here. And then let's take a look at the dollar. Oh, wobble, wobble, wobble. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so it looks like the dollar did kind of find some support again and it's still yeah it's still just kind of wobbling weekly so that doesn't look super super bullish the dollar has been swinging sort of opposite to the market for the last several months and this this week uptrend in the dollar has matched a week downtrend in the s p so I mean, if the dollar started breaking down hard, that would be a, you know, a big up signal for the market. But it's not doing that right now. The yen is holding. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I think markets are open now. Okay. I'll I'll get into some other market signals soon, but the. It doesn't, it's not shaping up to look like super bullish now. Like the liquidity is not super bullish. The, you know, the dollar kind of stuff is not that bullish. Um, but the technical setup looks looks pretty bullish today. But it's not like exciting bullish. There's a bunch of resistance and it's, it's a really tricky area still. So I think this is just a big area to sort of be careful a little bit more. And um, yeah, please uh, tap subscribe. And oh, I, I have t-shirts up on mmtgear.com now. Um, some funny stuff and, uh, you know, a couple, 
whatever monetary system related shirts that might be fun or some trading shirts and uh yeah so happy trading this is not investment advice and cheers